Hi, I'm Philip Paul, follower of Jesus Christ. And God would have me shout four to the nation of Finland in the same way that a responsible golfer yells four at the top of their lungs if they see someone in harm's way. I will share with you the story, the lesson that God gave me about me shouting four. Finland, you have four years left. I will share with you a vision of an electronic box that was still working even though the batteries had been removed. I will discuss another vision of pipes drilling through and uprooting the bedrock of Finland. And then I will discuss how God has given me clarity that we are about three and a half years out. Let me pray. If you have not seen my previous video, Finland, you have four years left. You need to watch that one first. Jesus, yours is the kingdom, the glory, and the power. I ask that Christ, you would speak through me, that I would speak by your spirit. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives within me. You are our hope of glory. You are the good shepherd. We are your body. We do not get to just choose the life of comfort that we want to live. But God, we have been crucified with Christ. And so, Father, we follow you, the shepherd. Amen and amen. I was playing golf with an exceptionally talented golfer. We were on the ninth hole, and it was an elevated tee-off box. And he hit a ball, and I instinctively knew that I had to shout four at the top of my lungs because there was somebody far out there that was about to be hit by the ball. And thank God he listened to me and moved out the way because the ball would have hit him and caused damage. Now, when I arrived home and I was praying, God began to work within my heart. And it's like he opened up the understanding of my eyes and said to me this, Phil, the same way that you shouted for for that golfer's protection, I am using you in this hour to shout for to the nation of Finland, especially Helsinki. Finland, you have four years left and you need to move out the way to safety. A fair warning is when somebody tells you, hey, get out the street. A car comes around the corner every single day. And if you do not move, that car will hit you. If you say, I don't believe you, you know, I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. Uh, Who is this crazy guy? And you get hit by that car and heaven forbid your friends or your family get hit as well. You are accountable and responsible. You were given a fair warning. Warning. Obviously, a word like this is going to be met with rejection. I don't have a big circle of friends here, and in my small inner circle, it's been met with rejection. I was weeping before the Lord, and the Lord said to me, Phil, you've given them a fair warning. Additionally, I have Bibles all over this house. One day, I was just weeping before the Lord. I'm like, Lord, these men of God who love their Christian accolades, who love the perception of being a Christian, are failing. They're showing me their true colors. They're folding their cards. When they are clearly displaying, they cannot identify a message from the kingdom of heaven that's being served to them. And so as I opened up a Bible, I opened it straight up to this verse that says, Better is a young poor servant who has wisdom than an old comfortable king who can no longer take advice. Which one are you in this hour? The Nordic countries, you have it very good here. But guess what? You can be comfortable and be in bondage. Things can feel really great, and that doesn't necessarily mean things are really good. I was shown a vision of that electronic box that had a blinking green light, and the batteries were removed. God did not give me a direct interpretation with it, but as I let it sit, as I let it marinate, I sensed that in the same way we have electronics, and if you unplug them, they can still function for a small brief window of time. That is what's going on with this nation. And if we intercede, it's like throwing a Hail Mary, hoping that God will put the batteries back in. At another time, early in the morning, I was given this vision of these pipes drilling through the bedrock. Geothermal heating here is really common, and in order to create the the actual heating, you need to drill through, uproot, and remove the bedrock of the nation. So I saw these metal cylinders all throughout the nation uprooting bedrock. And I said, Lord, what are you showing me? And the Holy Spirit gave me an interpretation along with the vision. He goes, the bedrock, the word of God is the bedrock to a nation. The bedrock is being removed, uproot by man-made systems all over this nation, especially for my generation. Interceding is asking God, please put the batteries back in the box. It's God, I hear this now. My people who are called by my name, humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. 
Abide in God's glory and he will heal your land. He will heal the bedrock. He will get the word of God back into the bedrock of this nation. But a house divided against itself cannot stand. And the church in Finland is divided. That is inviting destruction. You need to remove the politics from the pulpit. You need to come together as one, either A, to move the heart of God to save the nation. And I know you Finns are introverts. And unfortunately, I don't see any action being taken for that yet. So B, the church then needs to come together to set up the network necessary to be able to move everyone and have the provisions ready north of Tampere in about three and a half years time. The last thing that I will share with you is this. I sent out an email to almost every single church in Finland, all along the border of Finland and Russia, all the way up to the East Coast, uh, saying, hey, my name is Philip Paul. I'm just sending this message out to be obedient. Please watch this video. I sent it out to over 150 emails, probably. And it took me until about 2 or 3 a.m. I went to sleep for a couple of hours, and then the Lord woke me up early in the morning with a vision. It was like a download, actually. Much of my YouTube channel has been about cryptocurrency because, well, number one, it's something that I'm very interested in. It's great technology that's uh, finally finding its use case, uh, but also because the Lord speaks to me a lot about it. And so I was shown this vision of a blockchain um, receiving confirmations. And so the Lord said to me, the church right now, the network is receiving its validations. In other words, people are praying. The intercessors are interceding. Those who have eyes to see, those who have ears to hear, those who care are actually doing their work right now and receiving their confirmations. So I am still patient. Three and a half years is enough time. But the church, you do have to step up to the plate. You cannot sit back, relax, and take it easy. This is time to prepare your minds for battle, to ready your feet. In other words, have preparations and to come together to intercede and move the heart of the Lord. Right now, my job is to shout for to the nation of Finland in the same way that a responsible golfer warns people who are in harm's way. Be blessed in Jesus' name. There's an email below. Feel free to contact me. I don't always respond. Sometimes I forget. I'm sorry if that's the case. Um, but yeah.